Yeah, hello! I am your host, Andrew, the creator and editor of Indie Apocalypse, the one and only indie game bundle that is not about being mad about one particular thing in video games at the moment, and also the least successful among them all. Hello! I am here today with my first guest, Bryn. Hello, Bryn. I'm doing good. I was in the middle of saying that we were live on the internet. And I was like, I shit, I ran out of time. (laughs) But now we are truly live. So. (laughs) Wait a minute. Wait, I don't think you are live, though. No, wait a minute. Give me a second. Something changed on what changed. It should be the Discord is not. I'm very confused because I haven't. I've never. I didn't change anything. (laughs) Oh. Oh wait. Hello, you're back. Hello, Bryn. I'm here with my guest, Bryn. Hello. There you are. Yeah. Am I back now? Like, you, you're I here back, live? yes. I sent you to voice meter input, not voice meter aux input for Discord. Awesome. Which is also awesome. why it was spitting out your our audio at the very beginning in the first place. But we're good. Okay, we're good now. Okay, that's fantastic. Those so the, the whole wide world of the internet, uh, and everybody on Twitch can hear me now. It's very yes. good. So, Bryn, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, I am 22 years old. I am currently studying game design in Copenhagen, Denmark. And I've been making games for about two and a half years now. I, before that, I did a graphic design or visual communications and graphic design uh, at an art school. Uh, but I kind of like, like the interactiveness part of user interface and... I like motion, so I somehow ended up in video games. Uh, I leached onto Teams so I could learn how to program. Yeah. Uh, and after a while, I started like being able to make some games myself. So now I just do a whole bunch of video games, uh, usually like one game per week. I think I I did some math like a while ago. I did a one and a half game over the past half a year per week. It's like That's... they're not good games, right? They're not no. long games, but they're just like small prototypes that uh, I would consider like playable enough to the point where they have a start and they have some sort of an ending. Yeah, but I mean, sometimes you need to do that. There is this, I think the idea of, I was talking about maybe one of these previous weeks, but the idea of video games sketching where you need yeah, to be... Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, I, I think that like this should be more of a thing, right? Like, being able to just sketch a video game and being able to put it out there and have somebody play it. Because I feel like there's this like big perception of fear and uh, expectations when you put out a video game. Yeah. And you hear stories of people, oh, I've been making games for two years and they are afraid of showing like whatever they make. <laughs> Whereas in the end, it's like, well, what's the worst that's going to happen, right? Like, especially when you put stuff on each, nobody's going to play it anyway. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> or if they do, they're, they're like, when is, when is it coming yeah, to Android? <laughs> Yeah, if like one or two people end up stumbling onto the whole thing and playing it, that's awesome. Like, I'm going to be happy about it. And I feel like it also forces you to try to think about the game as a completed product, in a sense, even though you're just sketching it, right? To force you to finish it and then to move on to something else. So you aren't doing the same thing over and over and you're actually growing. Like, you don't start drawing by, like, drawing a figure and then keep drawing that same figure on the same piece of paper for two years, right? Yeah, like right. you're right. <laughs> drawing a square, and then you try drawing a cube, and then you try drawing a chair, right? Like, you go steps by steps. Yeah. Or, so like, like, yeah. I'm going to start drawing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start drawing. I'm gonna, let me start with a mural. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you, you keep working on that mural, and you don't touch anything else, right? Like, it feels like a lot of times game development or the direction that people take with game development is like this. But I think it like comes from a good intent, like this right. sort of stuff. 
because like people usually get in game development because they like playing games it's like oh i have a dream game i want to make that right and you like your ambitions and your goals are to make that game so you try to make that game it's like well why would you give up on making your dream game why would you give up on making something you always wanted to play right right so i think it depends that people don't do like work on these like really long projects for long amount a long amount of times and like don't show anything because they're afraid of it being scrutinized because it is like their favorite game it's gonna be like the game that they always wanted to have but i just don't think this is the best way to become a good game developer no no and there's not like a lot of good examples of people who are just like putting out tiny little like minute long games every now and then they're just like ah, i'm just trying i just want to get this mechanic working so here's a here's a sketch of that mechanic working what yeah. you see are like these short games being seen as like two hours long and that's a short game yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so, like, short for most people on steam is like below two hours which is very long in my standards at least <laughs> you're right right go any <laughs> any longer than that any shorter than that people are like i can't believe you paid money for this it's a rip yeah, i can refund this it doesn't matter <laughs> right or, yeah it's a, <laughs> i can play like, <laughs> yeah um, or like um the idea that um short games are like m what people the the conceptual idea of what mobile game design is like oh you play through discrete levels it's like mm -hmm for playing on your phone it's not like no you can make a full experience that takes only three and a half minutes yeah, yeah exactly i think like um there is something like behind this whole idea of like oh a short game can be uh, a good a good game like i don't i completely disagree with that but i think that like comes from the idea that if i make a super complex game right like if i make uh i don't know something that is like four-dimensional chess or whatever right I cannot expect you to play it for three and a half minutes, right? Yeah. Even if that's like my expectation, because like the more confusing you make the game, the more complex it is, the longer it's going to take you to process things. So like, and just understand what's happening, what's the system behind the game. So yeah. it's like in gameplay have focused games, you have to make something that's simplified if you want to make something that's uh, short. Right. Uh, it's not like... Mean... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, it's not like... You say, for instance, if you make like a movie or a song that is like dense and complex and someone doesn't understand it the first time, it continues on whether you understand it or not. Like, but if I make a game, if I don't understand it, I can't beat the game. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Uh, but, but if yeah. I didn't understand your abstract art film, it's going to finish after yeah, two hours, no matter what I was right. doing. You are already in this, are already, uh, yeah. You are already in the cinema, right? Like it's gonna play whether you like it or not. Yeah. Just live with. <laughs> but with a game, it's like anybody can close it. Uh, anybody like, and if I want to tell tell you some sort of a message, right? Like you won't get to the three minute mark if you can get past the one minute mark. Yeah. It's like for every for every frame, you know, movie, you basically have to click like next frame, please button. It's more like a slideshow, I guess, a game because it requires like player input to keep going. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's just weird, complicated, like balancing act between like, oh, I want people to experience everything, but like, where do you want to set that? Like, I don't want to say difficulty barrier. Cause it's not necessarily cause difficulty is also like a abstract concept of what is difficult to different people. Mm -hmm. There's this, uh, do you know, Tom Francis sounds familiar. He's the developer of gunpoint and it's okay. Future. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, I like he has an amazing YouTube channel. It's not like super popular. It has like ten thousand subscribers, and his videos get like around one thousand, two thousand views. Yeah. And he has like this series of himself, like just rambling about design. Essentially, one of them is called "Difficulty is Random." Uh, it's an amazing video. I'll actually link it into a chat uh, where he talks about the idea that like there are so many variables when it comes to what makes a game difficult for a person. That difficulty is like just plain randomness right like easy hard medium it doesn't mean anything it means completely different things to completely different people right you could have uh, five people that are the same age the same skin color and went to the same uh school and they would find something difficult and something easy right like it's so it's so vastly like dependent on 
the previous knowledge of the person, the like habits of that person, like right. what they're used to, what they find comfortable, what they don't find comfortable. It is insanely hard to actually make a game that is difficult as you intend it to be. Right. And I think that also ties into the whole concept of the the that of an author, right? That like you as an author and author's intent is something that is not existent. Uh, like not in modern media uh, overall, because like in modern media, it feel like it feels like the fans usually take ownership. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> I think, I think it ownership like... Is a bad, like it's kind of a bad word here. I'm not sure if that is the correct one, but it feels like the the show belongs to the to the fans in a sense, right? Right. People take and, a, like immediate ownership of something and their interpretation because they can iterate yeah. on their interpretation so quickly through like their Discord channels and their subreddits that suddenly exactly. this, this thing becomes true. And like these, yeah. ca- these characterizations become these canonical characterizations just because people have like iterated on them yeah. so often and you've lost you've lost the truth of behind the text long ago. Exactly. But it's like that that that's the thing, right? Like it doesn't matter what is the truth behind the text, it matters like how the person perceives it in the end. Yeah. Um so that's why like the author is that in that sense, right? Like the author doesn't matter. And that's more like more applicable to video games than to any other art form because like video games require player interaction. So it's even more likely that the player will become invested in the game and have their own interpretation for why they're able to do something, right? right. Or like why something is the way it is. And games inherently lend themselves to like the player, or, you know, the person interacting with the art to have a become like an author in and of themselves of their own experiences mm-hmm. because they have such I mean, like an active role in them. Exactly. Right? Like we could theoretically say that uh, if me and you sit down and we each play like the same game on our computers, yeah. if we don't like do it the same for every frame, we are essentially playing a different game, right? Because right. we decided and, different actions. We are having a different experience. So, and, yeah, it, it's like personalized. Game. The game is not focused on creating personalized content for you. Right. And games and people will like create their own games within games. Like for a while, as, at one point, we had gotten bored with playing Halo, like local Halo. Mm-hmm. So we instead invented a race version of it where we designed our own course. And mm-hmm. the point was, <laughs> and that's why all we played Halo for is for racing. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Across this, so cool. like through these courses, and it was like, had like it was intentionally across like a train track, so there was like op- in very intentional obstacles. But like that had become what the game was, and finding sub games within games creates this entirely new experience. Have you ever done anything like that? Like created your own like set of rules within an existing game? I like, yes, I, I think like that's more common for me in board games. Okay. Uh, like me and my group of friends that we play board games with, we house rule every so often, right? So like we create different rules inside of a game. I wouldn't say that like we completely went ahead and reinvented the game. Right. Uh, but like you are essentially playing a different game once you start changing the rules, right? And yeah. Like, board what games if, what if... do that. There's nobody enforcing you to play by the rules. Yeah. Um, but I think like your example of uh, making Halo into a racing game is a really nice example of like why really big games are also super beautiful because they're just like these giant amalgamations of systems, right? Systems right. on top of systems. And those systems are games in itself. And then the game has to work inside of a game. And then you can take a game part of the game and make it into a different game, right? Like look at Minecraft or... Yes. <laughs> Warcraft 3 custom maps, right? Like, there are literally genres that were born inside of those games because yeah. of the systems that are inside of the game that were not used the way somebody later decided, oh, let's use, like, killing uh, monsters in Warcraft 3 to make this game where you have to fight waves of minions and yes. then... Uh, and now it's the most popular game in the world. Yeah. It like, turns out that's really popular with people. Like people really like killing waves of monsters and getting uh, close to the enemy's base. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, what, what I've wanted to do for like a indie apocalypse bonus issue because I'm like slightly before I grew up on StarCraft, mm-hmm. and I want to make it where 
it's a bunch of games in like interpreting StarCraft use map setting games as video games. Cause a lot mm-hmm. of, I mean, technically MOBAs go back to StarCraft. They just didn't have the yeah, hero. Aeon of Strife, right? or yeah, whatever. Anyway, it goes back to Aeon of Strife. They just didn't have the hero mechanics present yeah. that Warcraft did. But like tower defenses also come from StarCraft originally. I don't think like tower defense like as a whole genre comes from StarCraft, but like it definitely, like, or, like, I yeah, may be wrong. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but like it definitely got like really popularized by StarCraft, I think. Like, right, that's for sure. right. Maybe if it came from somewhere else, but that is like the, like the, what spreads the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And, and it's like, like, wouldn't it be surprised if there sorry, were other right. things lurking in there they didn't even realize came from that? Yeah, I really like in in Warcraft 3, there's this custom app called uh, Impossible Bosses, yeah. which is basically just like raid bosses taken from WoW. So like really hard boss fights that you do with multiple people and somebody made them into custom app. And uh, it's like, I don't understand why that is not a genre. It's like the only game that comes close to it that I know of is Fury or F- Fury or however you spell that, which is like a arena boss fighting game it's okay. really beautiful yes yeah, so that's um, is, is that the one that kind of is kind of like bullet hell ish yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. but it's like simply just around the boss fights there's no like uh cannon fodder that you fight essentially right um so like that's that's like a game genre as well that was like inside of warcraft 3 that is kind of hiding i guess because there isn't really like you don't fight it outside of warcraft 3 except for fury yeah and maybe it's just like commercially viable to the point where people would make games about it, but it's not something that, like, because tower defense, you can find tower defense outside of StarCraft and Warcraft very yeah, easily, yeah. right? Yeah, but like, they've, they've sure, come and gone already. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure, like you said, like, there are examples and examples of, uh, like, probably maps that would never make it out of Warcraft, sadly, or uh, StarCraft. Right, or just, like, hasn't been tapped, like, has, didn't have that broad appeal. I was... P- a while ago, I was playing through like my Steam library and just kind of like, very like calling it more or less. Like I'd play something for like half an hour, an hour at the most, be like, "Ah, oh, this is no good. I'm gonna hide it forever." And I was playing, <laughs> th- I was playing through these games because I, you know, I at one point amassed a lot of games on that, like a lot of people did. And I had like, there were these games. I forget what they're called, but they had this like immense Warcraft energy, where it was like it was like a Diablo game. But also, what is it, was it torchlight no 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 because it was also a town management game oh okay so you would like it was like a static map you would you would go out and do like diablo style action adventure whatever get loot that sort of thing but there was also a town you would go back and like build and hire mercenaries for and that would occasionally get attacked okay. and it was like not great but it had that kind of like bizarre mismatch of mechanics. It was kind of like yeah, it's like somebody enjoyed playing a game and they enjoyed Warcraft Three. They're yeah. like, I'm gonna make this in a map editor together. Yeah, it had this that energy very much of like, here are the resources that I have. Let's see what I can make with it. Mm-hmm. I think though, like uh, since you mentioned, since we're already like on this whole topic of custom maps. Yeah. I think uh, StarCraft, for example, and its custom map editor and Warcraft 3 especially, um, since like that was the one that had a bit more capabilities, like those were probably some of like really early, very accessible game development tools. Yeah, I think um, that was my first game development tool was the StarCraft map editor. Yeah, I mean, same would apply to me for Warcraft 3. Like I remember being a kid and just playing around in the map editor there, right? Like I didn't make anything remotely close to good but uh <laughs> i played around there i raised some terrain i like just I, remember wanting to like place down a whole bunch of units that i would never be able to have in the actual game we yeah. can play and then play around with them i made a ma- i made one madness game i learned how to use i learned how to do mass attack beacons what what's that madness like is that a game type there or yeah so i believe madness i believe was the game type it was like so you would have like a collection of towers Mm -hmm. and you would get like a you would have like a square that units would regularly spawn in and there were levels based on how many kills you got so like after i'd kill like eight like 50 units or whatever my marines would turn to hydralisk or something 
And it was always like oh. anime madness. So like my Goku was like a hydralisk or something. You you know, it was just like dumb shit. <laughs> but and they were, Goku. they were all they were always like super imbalanced because like StarCraft has this inherent like armor um like weakness to strength things. So like there was these weird mm-hmm. power gaps or you would like upgraded something that sucked because it was stronger, but it was weak to everything else. But anyway, it was a weird thing. It was easy to make. And I made that, but that's interesting. Uh, I didn't know about like the madness map type. I feel like, like I, I, I played World War three custom maps yeah. as sort of like a party game sort of thing. Like it, if I ever sat down with my friends and we're like, we're not sure what to play we would go and like find some weird ass warcraft 3 custom app and we would play that right um so i never like really got into any genres there uh except i guess for impossible bosses but it like i had like this kind of surface level knowledge of uh what sort of maps were made and what sort of maps are there yeah i I played a lot i played less warcraft i played a lot of starcraft like Mm -hmm. they did like they did it had RPGs in that, but like with random battles, and it's like super bizarre that they'd come up with this kind of thing. Wait, in StarCraft? Yeah. Like so, uh, action RPGs or? No, so, I mean, yes, because it's StarCraft inherently, but it was like, yeah. it was they were trying to make Final Fit, like I think it was one major one was like, it was basically Final Fantasy VI was their intent. Oh, so you would have like a, in, like a, um, like a map unit, and it would encounter other units in the map, and then it would like zoom and lock your camera to like a battle zone, and it would summon the rest of your party, and then you would fight within that battle zone and get experience and money and all that stuff. Yeah, that is crazy. And that is like, so crazy. There's so much like, did Warcraft have? So Starcraft had a collection of match maps based on glitches within Starcraft. Mm-hmm. Did Warcraft have one of those? I didn't think so. Like, okay. maybe there were, but uh, I wasn't, like, into the game and off to the point where I, like, first of all, I was very young when this, uh, this was a thing between me and my friends. I was, right, like, 12, right. 13 years old, right? So we all just had pirated copies of Warcraft 3. Yeah. And we all just, like, play with Hamachi or something like that. So we weren't really playing, like, online. Oh, okay. Uh, so you weren't really, people. like, yeah. Yeah. We all just, like, played the campaign. We like everybody loved Artas to that. Like we would die for that guy, and we thought he was like the the coolest and the edgiest character in the world, and <laughs> nothing could beat him, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we just played a whole bunch of custom apps because it was like, oh, there are games within a game, and we like that. Yeah, it's more I or less that. Like there's still technically that. like the StarCraft II arcade that's going, but yeah, I actually like every so often we go and play StarCraft II arcade games, especially. Rainer Party, do you know that map? That sounds familiar. It's basically Mario Party made okay. in StarCraft. Yeah, yeah. There, I mean, that that existed back in the original vanilla StarCraft. I don't know if they called mm-hmm. it Rainer Party, but there was like Mario Party, but StarCraft. Oh, I think like it's probably called Rainer Party now because like yeah, uh, any map that you make in StarCraft or Warcraft 3 Reforged is basically owned by Blizzard. Right. So it, like, they can't call it Mario old. Party anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's a bit harder to, to call it that way. I think, like, that's a bit of a... I, I understand it from a legal point of view for Blizzard. Right. So they can, like, hold these games to say, oh, this is owned by us now. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? So I'm using a tool, essentially, that, yeah, okay, you're giving me, but I also paid for it. And right. <laughs> what I make with a tool is not mine anymore, right? Like Right. They Well, because Blizzard wants to own League of Legends this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. The next League of Legends, they want to have it. <laughs> right. They don't want somebody to make it using their engine and then like run off somewhere else. I, I guess technically, you know, Dota, the Dota League of Legends, like, you know, legacy or like chronology is this whole thing. But yeah, I think they're like, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't run a gigantic gaming company, so right. I have no clue how this works, but feels so weird that you would tailor your like legal laws or whatever the hell you call them right right based on one fringe case because right. i mean but it's i like, would say that it's a huge sorry. fringe case 
Yeah, yeah, it has, it's a huge fringe case, but it's like, what's the chance of something like that repeating one more time right. inside of like one of your games? I'd say that like there is a chance, right? Yeah, yeah. But it would really like completely change your law around it. I don't know. It's just like stupid, right. uh, especially stupid things that really con- uh, companies do, I guess. Yeah, especially now that there are so many, like, there are way more tools that exist now that's easier to make your own game than there were back then. Mm-hmm. Like, that's back true. then. Like, what was I going to make a <laughs> like running on my Windows ninety eight? What was I going to make a game on, like Flash or something? Yeah, I mean, like, I actually wanna uh, at one point. Uh, I've been like daydreaming about this for the past one year or so. Yeah. At one point, I wanna like sit down, download a two thousand and three version of Flash, and figure out how to make a game in like two thousand three version of Flash. Just like have the authentic new grounds uh, experience, essentially. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, as someone who rates a lot of indie games, the spirit of New Grounds is going strong still. There's yeah, and like that, like that New Grounds style of like, wow, you t- just made a game. I suppose anyone can make a game. Yeah, <laughs> and I, um, I, I actually like really like New Grounds as a website. Yeah, I feel like when I upload stuff on itch, like I mentioned before, nobody fucking plays it, or because it's like it feels like New Gro- uh, itch is like. Just a bunch of creators, right? Which is cool, right? But you don't really get people playing your game, and a lot of times the feedback that you get is from other creators, right. which is valuable feedback. But it's a different kind of feedback that you get from right. somebody who is actually like finds your game because they find the thumbnail interesting, yes. or because they want to play tower defense game, right? Yeah. Whereas if I upload a game on Newgrounds, like my, my games don't get a lot of plays on itch, and I wouldn't say they get a lot of plays on new grounds by either of those standards but uh, not getting a lot of plays on itch is getting like 30 plays not getting a lot of plays on new grounds is getting like 2000 right yeah. there's a huge difference in those numbers yeah and i think it's like there's a difference get... of community between the sites yeah it's a completely different community and like the new grounds community they actually like they tell you to go kill yourself because the controls are bad but they also give you like very nice feedback uh <laughs> about why they like playing the game or send you a like personal message. Hey, could you please make more levels? I want to play more, more levels. Right. And it like feels like you have actual people that are playing the game. Whereas on itch, you get people fr- uh, like you get uh, feedback from your peers, which is valuable, but it's completely different type of feedback that right. you get, right? Right. Sometimes it is feedback that is like, well, here's my idea instead yeah. of feedback. But uh, that's, Okay, like you get that from people, like from yeah. players as well, right? Like, right. And, uh, but uh, but it's still it, it's a different kind of thing because uh, it doesn't come from somebody who understands what you're going through, and I think that's like what makes it ge- more genuine in a sense, I guess, because it's not like okay, looking from your perspective, blah 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 blah. It's more like make the game good. It's shit right now, right? And yeah. like that kind of like like it's not useful, but it tells you uh, like how they feel about your game, right? Right. Um, now, now it, we're approaching we're approaching our end it, of our segment here. So I have one question to ask you. Go ahead. Oh wait, shit! I have two questions. I've got my most important question to ask you. Yeah, okay, How did you sure. hear about Indie Apocalypse? I uh, saw it on a gem page. Uh, okay, just, yeah, that's what I found is the most common solution. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, how do I spread the word? But if people are just finding it on the jam page, that's, I guess it works. Um, I did. Like, I think it works, but uh, I think like it has the same problem as I just mentioned about it, right? Yeah. Creators will find in the apocalypse. It's not going to be consumers that will find in the apocalypse. Well, that's a whole um, other problem. I need to make sure the creators find it this month. If you if you think I don't every time you join in the apocalypse the jam if you don't think I look through your itch page beforehand and ju- prejudge whether or not your game is ever going to be in there well I do <laughs> and this <laughs> month looks kind of bleak <laughs> but uh, I I'm very transparent about my judging like policies and everything I have no issues talking about those sorts of things and you a lot, I think a lot of people's my first games are never going to get in. Because they're just like, I made a ball that rolls around and goes into a hole. And I'm like, that's boring. I don't care. Yeah. But um, I think like, if, if, I, if I can just add a tiny bit like to the whole yeah. uh, jam thing with in the apocalypse, I think it's like the there is a huge appeal, especially for somebody who 
just like as a hobby makes games when they see a gem where it's like oh if you get selected you get money like yes. even if it's like five dollars or something right right um because it's just this idea of like oh i can do something i like and somebody's willing to pay me for it that's what and i'm I trying think, to like, do <laughs> yeah and i think like that's something that draws creators towards itch as well but it's also the reason why i think like you might get people where it's like oh this is a ball that rolls around it's yeah like, oh i made it give money right like you know people they're, feel they're like playing playing the numbers and hoping that like yes well maybe maybe there just won't be enough people and i will get in but I, yeah yeah <laughs> That, that won't happen. I will hand pick more entries if that happens before I get pick your ball roll game. <laughs> I will personally start cold emailing people to submit their games. I mean, if if anybody is making a ball rolling game now, just like make another one afterwards. Like try to try to improvise on it, right? Sketch right. more ball rolling games. Make a make a ball sure. rolling game that says something. Yeah, it's That's like, like you ball can do rolling it, games. Right? Have you uh, have you ever played like that ball rolling game like on Nokia phones where you were this red ball? It was like a platformer where you gain speed. I think it's like a better version of Sonic, honestly. I have not. But the, my final question before we go to break, Bryn, is that yeah. what would you suggest as a not video game to all the gamers out there? Like any other different piece of art to try in their life? Um, I really got into motion graphics lately. Okay. Just things that, like, just very short animations that people make, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'm not talking about, like, animatics or frame-by-frame -frame animation, like, traditionally drawn. I'm talking more about, like, uh, software-driven keyframe animations. So people manipulating, like, basic shapes to try to emulate motion. Just look it up. Search for MoGraph. It's a really beautiful world of really small videos. It's really inspiring. And that's MoGraph with the PH? Uh, yes, okay. MoGraph, PH. Perfect, perfect. And now, great talking to you. We will go to break, and we will be Beautiful. back in, say, two and a half minutes or so. Hello, and welcome back to Indie Apocalypse Radio. I'm your host, still Andrew, and I'm here with Exo Drifter. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. So, oh, um, oh yes, I think Bryn's not here anymore. So, yeah, but he's here in spirit. Oh, okay, all right. That's just that's just my layout. <laughs> in case Bryn did speak up, people were like, "Who's this? Who's this guy here?" Yeah, that makes sense. Um. So, hey, what's up? Uh, nothing much. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, Tell me a little just, bit about yourself. Yeah. So, I am a software developer by trade. I currently work at a consulting company called Flipstone Technologies. We mostly write sort of like logistics software, which is super exciting, I know. I'm very um, excited. <laughs> yeah, so... Let me not tell right you about now, my very exciting day job. Yeah. <laughs> right now, most of my job is uh, like just converting this old mainframe system over... Anyway, it's not, it's not terribly interesting. Uh, what is kind of interesting is that I haven't actually had a formal full-time job in the games industry before, which is kind of interesting. But... Well, neither have I. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it's always kind of funny to me because whenever I talk to my friends yeah. about stuff, they'll always be like, what about that game company you worked at like a few years ago? And I'd be like, that was a consulting company. <laughs> you didn't... We didn't make games. Just because I mean, we made we made a game that one time for WWE, but that was about it. Just because our company name is like Plasma Soft, and we sound like yeah, a yeah. It was called Chaotic Moon. It totally sounds like a game company name. <laughs> that, that, it? that sounds like <laughs> a game company that I would see in a lot of previews that would have the kind of yeah. money to support a support a preview cycle, but not necessarily yeah. a game that would come out that people would remember. Yeah, I feel it's sorry. it's kind of funny. they actually they had a sister company called Team Chaos, and that was the one that made games. But we were the consulting side of the business, which is really funny. Sorry to all the chaotic moons out there that I inadvertently slammed on, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, anyway. So now now that I can remember up front, up top, 
How did you hear about Indie Apocalypse? Although I think I know the answer to this now. I realized as I said it. You you know what? What do you think the answer is? I think I went to the Itch channel. I said join Indie Apocalypse, and you were like, "That sounds cool." Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> I was remembering a second ago. Like, oh wait, I pop in there once a month and say, "It came out, please join," and then I leave the Itch Discord server forever until next yeah. month. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how I heard about it. So maybe you should do that more often. Maybe. I, f- I just don't want to be annoying. I guess I'm going to be more... I've, I've you still... don't want to be annoying. There's like there's people in there who post updates to their games multiple times a day, and it's like, fine. It's fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. I I see. I This whole year has been like, I don't want to be annoying. But now I realize you should probably be more annoying. Cause I people... mean, there's a limit. But yeah. I think you're nowhere close to that limit. <laughs> I think I had a bad experience because it was like one of the servers, like I can't remember if it was like Pico8 or BitC or someone, but I asked like, oh, can I post this? And someone's like, yeah, sure. Let me do this. And they posted it like at everyone. And there was a big, <laughs> and there was a big kerfuffle about it. I was like, ugh, ugh I'm not doing this again. <laughs> I so see. Like, there's a lot of, why does this need to be at everybody? Who is this? What's going on here? Yeah. $20 seems awfully low for a zine page. Traumatic like, experiences are very good at making you not do the thing again. Yes, yeah, why I haven't drank milk for like f- 10 years after I drank rotten milk once. Oh no, that sounds awful. It was a miserable experience. One time I drank half and half instead of milk, and I will never do that again. Is half and half gross? I, I don't drink coffee. It's just way thicker than normal milk, oh. and uh, I will never ever drink milk again without checking the label first. That's a good idea. I was just like, well, this looks like milk. Because it was like in a milk carton, right? Right, right. But it was actually half and half. So, yes. And I, I drank like a glass of half and half. And then, like, my grandparents the next day were like, where'd all the half and half go? Oh, 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 you drank a glass? Now, now you're telling a different story. I thought you like... Yeah, I drank... I drank half and half, like a whole glass, without even knowing. <laughs> I thought you were, see. I thought you were like you popped open a cart and you're like you had a little sip and you're like, oh, this is thicker than usual. Not no, I, th- I just like I thought it was thicker than usual, but I still drank the entire thing. Like I'm not gonna waste food. I already poured all of it out. Come on, right? <laughs> like <laughs> I just wanted some milk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, okay, that's <laughs> very. Very different. I thought that was like a little cream as a treat, but <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, 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 a lot about we talk a lot about um, surprisingly a lot about food. We didn't get any questions this week, which we usually get questions, and there are no questions about, this week. You granted this. I have an audience of, as you can see, like ten people on average per week, maybe at the high end, but. Mm-hmm. We usually get sidetracked and end up talking all about food. Or that's what all the questions are about for some reason. I mean, food is uh, is very important. Right. It's very universal and very much, I didn't have to pay for this zine so I can <clears throat> learn about these games. And also, I don't yeah. know who any of these people are, so what am I going to ask them? Yeah, you know how people complain about how, like, you know, like, people, like, don't play their games or that, like, not everyone knows what, games as an art form are yeah. like they only know what like the mainstream games are but everyone has an opinion on food because they're forced to eat food <laughs> right right <laughs> as much as you think people are as much as it would seem like people are forced to play cyberpunk they're not actually forced to play it yeah but like food on the other hand everyone has to eat food that yeah. is at least true for the moment if, so <laughs> if you don't eat any of it you will eventually die yes and your body so, will you warn know. you about that, like very often. Would you would you be willing to live in existence that doesn't have food consumption um, as a part of it? I would say I would take it and leave it. I would like I would be I would be fine with like soylent six days out of the week. You know. I see. Yeah. But like, if I was in the mood, to, sometimes I get in the mood to like eat something. But sometimes I like I need to functionally eat. And I was like, I don't want to eat anything, but I need to like technically nourish my body. And I've tried Soylent once and it was like, fine. Yeah. Soylent is fine for me too. I've tried a couple of other different food substitutes 
but I haven't really found one that I liked, which is too bad because apparently, um, I'm not Canadian, but apparently Soylent's not considered food in Canada. <laughs> um, is it like a nutritional supplement or something? Yeah, something like that, which I which I thought was really funny because it makes me think that like, oh, well, I'm not I'm not actually eating food because Canada doesn't think it's food. Like, <laughs> well, maybe maybe they're wrong on this one. Also, I don't think I can get it easily anymore. I think like Target had it for like a week. It, like, oh, you it can't was... get it anymore. Or I no, it's not easily viewable. Like maybe it is somewhere on a shelf somewhere. I'm just not looking at it. I know, I know they stopped their uh, their rewards program recently. Maybe that's why Target doesn't stock Soylent anymore. <laughs> Maybe. I just remember seeing one, on, like, one of their, on one of their ends. And it was like, Soylent? I remember hearing about this on the internet. I will give this a try. And I was like, ah, this is like a tasteless protein drink. Oh, uh, my friend just messaged me who's watching that Soylent's not considered food because it doesn't have enough protein to be labeled as a meal supp- or a meal substitute. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I guess it's considered food, but not like as a meal substitute because it doesn't have enough protein in it. You got to like substitute it with like a protein shake. Put some of your protein powder inside of your Soylent and just yeah, live, maybe. Your best, live your best life. But... Um... That reminded me of another question that I got. I know it wasn't a question that I got. It was something I was thinking about, which was, is there a food that you had that you didn't realize was regional until you like left your region and like, oh, I actually can't oh. get this. Yeah, you asked this question last week. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, um, this is going to sound really stupid. But I didn't realize that barbecue was regional. And I know you might be listening and thinking, hey, hold on. Barbecue is like fucking everywhere in America. Right. And I'm going to say, like, that's not true. Texan barbecue is so much different. Right. Like, like I, I've heard like, like there's like five different types of barbecue once you hit the south. Yeah. So like I, I've had barbecue not in Texas before. And I have to say that it's. It's different, <laughs> and I don't I don't know if I if I like it simply because it's uh, different or if it's because it's not what I'm used to. But like Texan barbecue is like its own thing, and it, it tastes different to me. So that's something I would say is like regional that I like because like before people said like oh yeah like southern barbecue like the barbecue you get in the south is the best and like the barbecue you get up north is like no good. But that was just like something I had heard, right? Right. And it wasn't until like I actually went somewhere else and tried the barbecue there that I was like, oh yeah, I see what you mean. Like the barbecue is just like different. Yeah, in my in my mind, barbecue is a <clears throat> like a cooking style. Like all, yeah, all, all barbecue is is that you cooked it on a grill. Yeah, it has a little more char on it, and I guess you put barbecue sauce on it because it's called barbecue sauce. But yeah, I actually like, don't like barbecue sauce that much. But that's just like what, like <laughs> melted brown sugar? Uh, well, I mean, it depends on, you know, what kind of barbecue you're having. Yeah, well, There's I mean, all like sorts of different like, barbecue recipes. You're like, I bought Kraft barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that you would buy. Why would you do that to yourself? Well, listen, I'm a northerner, all right? We don't have barbecue <laughs> up here. We have like lobsters uh, and crabs. There, and... there's some really famous places in Austin. If you ever show up in Austin, you should come. Uh, invite I've, me. I've I'll, I'll invite before. you to barbecue, and we can go wait in the like hour long line, hours long line that is Franklin's Barbecue. Um, I've, I've truly wanted to like go out, and like now even now even this radio show is another way to like sneak my way into conventions by submitting these as panels and be like, oh, I can get in for free now. I mean, this is a panel. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, I, 2021, we all get, we're all vaxxed up and we're all ready to travel, ideally, hopefully. Yeah, you could do just, like, you could still do the Twitch stream and everything, but it's, like, live from some convention. Yeah, I did submit to MAGFest yeah. this year. They're oh, like, nice. They're, like, live. I did not plan out any of my guest list, but I'm like, hey, I'll submit to MAGFest, I guess. Yeah. Yes. And this, that sounds like, like fun. I do want to get out. I did want to go to Austin. I've been rejected from Fantastic Arcade once or twice, I believe. 
Well, that's too bad. Yeah, I've, I don't. I get reject. I am a man of indie apocalypse was born out of my frequent rejections, partially. <laughs> Have you ever submitted something to the magazine? What magazine? Indie Apocalypse. No, I would get. Well, I mean, I do put. I do actually have stuff in every issue. Did you? Did you? Uh, do you like put it through the same no. uh, review process that you put everything else under? If I put a game, maybe. But I've just been. <laughs> I've been just been adapting sixty nine love songs by the Men Next Fields into role playing games. Oh, nice! Like bit by bit, three songs per issue. It's something I just wanted to do for a while, and it, it fills its pages in the zine. But I'm trying to think of other foods that would be considered regional, uh, and I didn't find out until I got older. But I'm having a hard time thinking of any. Yeah, I feel um, like it's something like you don't think about because I didn't think about this until I was in Canada. And yeah, I, and I wanted chowder, and it didn't exist. Like there was no seafood soups. But wait, wait, clam chowder doesn't exist in Canada. Well, I was my hotel. I was my hotel was like next to like a, like a Whole Foods or something, or Trader Joe's or something with like a soup bar, and they had like nine to twelve soups, and I'm used to like a seafood soup being one of the one of three options like by default, and they didn't have one out of nine, so it was like weird. Huh. It I must see. be regional. <laughs> have you? Uh... Have you had uh, fried Oreos? I I don't know what a fried Oreo is. Oh, you don't? Okay, I, I, I think I, that's I think, a southern thing. I also. think I maybe conceptually... Is it like batter fry? Yeah, batter fried. Batter fried Oreos. No, I've never... Like the, fry, the, the like fried plus thing not meant to be fried is like a world that exists in carnivals in like TV to me. <laughs> yeah so like southern carnivals they they love to fry just about anything and one of the more popular ones is fried oreos so i guess that's another thing i didn't even have to travel for that one you don't know what fried oreos are i i uh, understand it conceptually but yeah i mean yeah but like it, it's kind of strange because like i i've always knew that fried oreos were a thing yeah and that people around me have had them i've never had one because i've never actually been to a country fair right but I haven't been um, to one since I was like a child. I see. Or a cat. But then fire. like uh fried butter is also a thing. Have you have you heard of that? Wait, like just like a stick of butter that you fry and eat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. A battered uh stick of butter. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> so what you do is you freeze the butter first and then you batter it and then you fry it. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. I understand it conceptually. But it's I mean, the same like, thing like with ice cream. If you want like deep fried ice cream, you do the yeah. same thing. You freeze it first. Well, I guess ice cream is always frozen, but I mean like you right. freeze it so that it's like really stiff, yeah. right? And then you batter it and then you fry it. Well, I guess my confusion is usually I don't just crack open a stick of butter and just like chomp on it in the middle of the I night. mean, it's more of a country fair thing. So like you go to a country fair and they'll have like uh, deep fried butter. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, yeah. I, yeah, I, I guess there are sometimes I have put a lot of butter on things, so, and that's functionally the same thing as just chomping on a piece of butter. But it's, mm. it's I mean, it feels different, right? Like the texture yeah. is different. It's like, like butter when it's solid. <laughs> like there's some conceptual thing where it's like, I shouldn't eat that. Did you know that like eating straight up butter is actually something that climbers will do? For just like all the fat real fast or something? Yeah. So the the reason is because butter is the highest calorie dense food that you can take with you when you're climbing. And weight is really important when you're climbing. Right. Yeah. So they'll bring butter <laughs> and, and they'll literally just eat the butter because it has a lot of calories and it doesn't weigh a lot. Yeah. And it doesn't go bad because it's freezing out. Well, yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um. Kiwis, kiwis. Quick question: How would you eat a kiwi? How would I what? Eat a kiwi. I don't know. I've never killed a kiwi and eaten it. No, no. The food. The food. The food. I would never. Oh, the. F you mean the fruit? The oh, fruit. Yes. Uh, not the. How not do the I eat a kiwi? Yeah. Usually, I uh, remove all the skin first, and okay. then. Okay. All right. 
So this is Andrew's tip because this has come up. It came up again recently, and I thought about. Um, you just ch- you just chomp on that thing, and you did all the way through. What do you do? You do you like the skin? Skin and all. Skin. Yeah, I've heard that people like that, but I I've tried it once, and I, okay. I intensely dislike that experience. <laughs> okay, as long as you've, because ch- I I there was um. An old three-word phrase comic, because that guy is going through all his stuff recently, that mentioned you can just, like, eat a kiwi straight up. And I don't remember if I learned that idea or if that reinforced the idea in my mind. I see. But, Have you ever had just, like, an onion straight up? Um, maybe. I've I, I have a friend who's done that before. With multiple different kinds of onions, because yeah. they all have various levels of pungency, right? Right. Um, and I don't, I don't understand how they're able to tolerate the taste. <laughs> I definitely had one night where I ate a lot of lemons. <laughs> a I lot did, of lemons? Yeah, I did cut those open, though. I didn't eat those rind and all, but I did eat a... For some reason, I'm like, we have a lot of lemons. I'm just going to eat all these lemons. I see. Or better, like, I know I, that, like, as a kid, that I, I really enjoyed sour foods. Yeah. So I would do things like eat limes by themselves or stuff like four warheads in my mouth at the same time. Right. Until, um, until you lose that rush and you can't feel anything anymore. Yeah. Well, until it becomes sweet. And, and then you're like, man, this candy sucks because it's yeah. not sour anymore. It's just but, like hard candies. Yeah, so maybe it's like that for my friend, except like with onions. It's kind of funny, though, because they'll complain about it not tasting so great, but then they'll like they'll do it periodically uh, when we're barely watching them. And we'll just be like, you just took a bite out of an onion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've, I've had people ask me about like weirder things. Like I would just I have like, I guess, a palate that I could be very easily vegan where I could just like I have a high tolerance for like fruits and veggies. Where I've known people yeah. who are vegan who like eat a lot of like, why are you eating so much fake chicken? Like, why go through all the effort? Why not just eat like all the substitutes that exist instead of like spending nine dollars on like a two inch pot pie that pretends is chicken or something? But yeah, I I personally don't like the the pretend to be meat substitutes. Right. There are so many really good not meat substitutes that are really good, like tempeh and yes. like fried tofu and bean curd. And please, like, if you're going to try a meat substitute, don't try something that tries to pretend to be meat because they're pretty yeah. awful. Yeah, I had seitan that was like... Oh, yeah, seitan is really good. That oh was my like God. sausage. I went to like a, like a punk show connected to an art gallery connected to a restaurant... And, yeah. they, and the restaurant had like seitan, sausage, and pepper. And I was like, yeah, I'll get that. God, it was seitan like, is so tasty. Yeah, I was like, I did not notice the difference. And it was like, wow. Like, also, like, I really enjoy that kind of like sausage spices. I've realized as I've enjoyed, like, more than sausage itself is like the spicing to it. Yeah. Because even like turkey sausage, I think I prefer texturally to sausage sausage. But. But um, they also use cards as their weight system, like cards. Yeah, like I would get like a jack of spades, and then they would call the jack of spades your meal is ready. <laughs> it was a weird art restaurant. <laughs> That's really interesting. It was in Providence. Providence is cool, but like yeah, um, there was a guy outside selling VHSs. It was like a flea market. Also, it was a weird night. Man, that sounds pretty awesome. I miss stuff like that. I used to sell, like, I used to go VHSs. Used to, now I wish I should start selling VHSs. <laughs> I gave a bunch of VHSs as a gift once for Christmas. Oh yeah. So well, because they were they were doing like a gift swap, and I hated doing the gift swap. So who likes doing a gift swap? Come right. on. Right. It was like a, like White Elephant or Yankee Swap or whatever the the name is, the regional name is for it. So I went to the thrift shop and I bought like six copies of Big Daddy on VHS. And then <laughs> I put five. I don't know what that is, but it sounds like a porno. <laughs> no, no. It's an Adam Sandler movie. Adam Sandler um, adopts a child or he's given a child. I and see. He takes, and he takes care of it. The cover is like him and the kid are like peeing on the side of the street. 
Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very <laughs> peak Sandler before okay, he went yeah. to be whatever he is now. Um, yeah, sure. But one question before we go, because we're getting close to our time, is because like yeah. I said, just surprisingly flies by. Uh, non-video games for all the gamers. Yeah, so since we're on the topic of food, I'd like to point out that cooking is a really fun activity to do that's not... Oh, yeah, I love uh, cooking, Mama. Yeah. And mm. personally, like, I really enjoy cooking because it's like a fun little scientific experiment where I get to combine things that might not necessarily go together and see what works and what it tastes like and that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun to to try out cooking. And you don't need a whole lot of money to start cooking either. Um, there's a really good channel on YouTube. I don't remember the name of it anymore. But it was a show about cooking on a budget. And right. this person used to like live in the projects or something like that. And uh, he had money now, but he just wanted to show everyone like, hey, like you don't need a lot of money to like learn how to cook something that tastes really good. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that show because even though I like didn't watch a lot of it because it was just really interesting to see like what you could do with such cheap ingredients that were not necessarily fresh. You right. Know? You don't always need like cardamom. Yeah, exactly. Which so. is like eleven dollars to usually get like a jar of it. Yeah. So there are there's a lot of ways to get into cooking and I personally find cooking to be a lot of fun. So yeah. definitely would recommend. And it and it's like a backdoor, it treats all it's got kind of like that gamer backdoor where it's like you can fail at it and not understand why you failed because you thought you did everything right. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely that. Um, and there's also definitely the whole sort of like when someone tastes something you made and they think it's awesome, you get that 360 no scope action right there. Yes, where yes. you feel amazing and incredible. Yeah. Well, I always, I always film people who like once I'm done eating to do my like bite of the night and everything. Uh huh. My, my highlight reels for Twitch. I do. We're gonna go to break before I just make fun of Twitch a lot. I <laughs> I understand that you have to do it, that that's the culture. I can't stand it personally, <laughs> but I shout outs to fuck bong Lord in the chat. Thanks for supporting me. Thanks for the 50 months of subs. I'm going to go to commercial now. Yo, we're here with everyone. The surprise guesses. Third guesses. There is no guest. It's the surprise. The surprise. Third guest is scheduling conflicts last minute. So instead, we're going straight to our group session. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Hey, is, oh, is this Indie Apocalypse Radio? Am I, am I in the right place? Yes, this is Indie Apocalypse Radio. First time, long time, extra judge. How you doing? Hi, mm -hmm. I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm doing all right. We've been through this before. We don't need to be through it again. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? We're skipping small talk? Okay. We're skipping. So we've, the first session is for small talk. This is for this is for all the big questions. Big talk. <laughs> it's, it's too bad we didn't keep going with it because if you were to ask, how are you doing? I would have said like, how are I you feel doing? like I've been talking about food a lot recently. That's how I'm doing. I'll tell you about How was your day? How's the weather where you are? Is it dark outside? <laughs> is it light outside? <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, like raining food. Ah, yes. <laughs> I did have someone yeah. who was like literally broadcasting from the other side, of the, from like the other side of the world. So it was like in the morning for them. Oh yeah, like seven a.m. I mean, it's two a.m. for me right now. Yes, you are. <laughs> you jumped the gun. I'm eventually going to host a European stream <laughs> that's more reasonably <laughs> scheduled for Europeans. Like, don't worry, my sleep schedule is fucked enough for this. Yes. So. Perfect. Like... Perfect. <laughs> But I'm I mean, getting like, a bit hungry with like the whole conversation you guys had about food. I was considering like should I should I bring my laptop with me to the kitchen like make a sandwich or something like that. Uh, but I do want to add, I actually find like chicken substitute uh, substance meat like not like substitute. Yeah. Whatever you call it, really good. I bought it on accident like one month ago because I thought I was buying chicken and I just didn't read labels because I hate shopping. Yeah. And then I kept buying <laughs> it and it was actually good. So like, I would recommend that. It's I just, see where yeah. you're coming from. Yeah. If like you, are, like if you are vegan or vegetarian and you want people to try out things that aren't trying to imitate, 
eat, right? But it's actually yeah. really good, trust me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah was... so the chicken substitutes at least are like on the better end of the spectrum as far as like meat substitutes go, generally in my experience. It was just when I was yeah. living with a vegan so many years ago, it was just like it was like super expensive. <laughs> And that was like, why are you spending so much money on like your your fake chicken nuggets? Like, <laughs> ch chicken nuggets are cheap disposable food. You should just be spending like eleven dollars on them. Man, everything here is expensive, so it doesn't really matter. Like, if I buy chicken substitute or oh, okay. actual like chicken meat. Dudes. Oh, see here, you can get like chicken nuggets for like a whole bag for like four dollars, or you can get like twelve of them for like. At least back then, it was like so much more expensive. That sounds like insanely great and insanely bad for my health. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, America knows there, there, there's a real bad obese problem. So maybe that, maybe, maybe those two things are cor correlated somehow. <laughs> maybe, m maybe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I like don't, don't worry we have like horrible food here as well I live on ramen like whenever I don't feel like cooking and I can always get that for very cheap I don't know why food. that would cause me to not worry anymore <laughs> I'm, that I'm, sounds worrying <laughs> I'm less worried about it now to be honest I'm far more <laughs> relaxed um, so this segment is like did anyone have i guess we already had questions for each other this was like eventually i want to put games in this segment but i haven't like planned them ahead of time yet you mean like playing games in this yeah, segment but not like video games like games you could play over the radio <coughs> games. i see like word games like ex exactly oh, like, uh, yeah <laughs> like game game shows Right, like game shows, like word <laughs> games, like those kinds of games. But that requires more work, and I haven't put that in yet. If so, you want, I can I can put some work into that. That sounds like fun to me. Maybe, maybe. Have, maybe. have either of you two, like ever watched uh, like some TV channel at like four a.m. when they start like these weird game shows, or like it's either like commercials or game shows that are basically like scammy commercials? I have no. I, not Man, I don't know. But I also like I also haven't had cable in a very long time. I mean I haven't either. I just remember as a kid like Oh yes, yes. In that case, yes, I do remember staying up late yeah. and watching like <laughs> game shows. I, I don't I don't have a TV, don't worry. I'm not a boomer. The what? the thing I remember the most growing up as a kid was like watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Oh, that was a good game show. I like that. I remember like eventually I did it always have its own network or like, I can't remember if it, like game show network used to just be like one of those weird channels you got with everything else. And it was like, I think that was like before they were making original stuff even. I've never had cable, so I, I have no idea. I've only ever had public television. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, turns out you did not miss out on very much. I didn't think so either at the time. No, you missed out on <laughs> Old episodes of Match Game, I suppose. I mean, I was busy playing Warcraft Three Battle.net, so. Oh, tell, tell me about Warcraft Three Battle.net. <laughs> it was it was great. I really miss it. I've been looking for a replacement of it recently, and it seems like that replacement is Dota Two, but the community is nowhere near as active. And as it turns out, at least last time I checked, the Warcraft Three Battle.net community is still very much alive. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> They play so, different games now for the most part, but yeah. Do they still play like preschool wars? I I don't know. I mean the games that I remember are like Battleships okay. and Dota and well I didn't like Dota because everyone who played it was a real mean person. Yeah. Um Did you play any Dota uh, Dota like Dota offshoots or like other I guess we wouldn't Yeah, have... yeah. So like Battleships and like Tank Wars and okay. um and what I really liked about Battleships that I haven't seen in any other game ever since is like this idea of playing a MOBA where everyone plays the same character and there's no like innate, like there's no like micro managing, attacking and defending and that sort of thing. Or you, there's only like placement because the weapons fire automatically and using abilities at opportune times. So it's like way less like, trigger happy 
or not trigger happy, like reaction time, because yeah. you don't have to do it as much, right? right. Wouldn't so, that almost be like an auto battler sort of thing? Yeah, it's yeah, kind of. It's kind of weird because I I know about auto chess, but auto chess doesn't seem like what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's have you like. Tried any, whole... Have you tried any other? <laughs> Sorry, got it. I was gonna say I think there's like this whole group like who knows even like generation of people who grew up on like Blizzard use map setting games, and they're like there's an itch. They everyone has like their own like particular itch that hasn't yet to be scratched yet. That was like yeah, there were so many good games back then. There was even like uh, Run Kitty Run. Uh, there was one about like Mr. Tree or something like that. I don't remember. Or like Don't Touch the Panda. Are, um, do you know about Don't Touch the Panda? No, I, I, my my Warcraft is knowledge is a lot lower than my Starcraft knowledge. All right, so in Warcraft Three Battle.net, Don't Touch the Panda is a game where you uh, do what it says in the title. You have only one thing you can control, and that's a panda, and you're you're instructed to not do anything. Uh, but the goal is to become the last panda alive, more or less. Yeah. Um. And there's one person who plays the god, and the god is trying to um, convince players to move the panda around and do things. Um, and the catch is that if you if you don't touch your panda, your panda is always invincible. But as soon as you touch it and move it somewhere, you're not invincible anymore. So <laughs> okay, this sounds actually sounds familiar. Once you mentioned the the invincibility part, yeah. So, so it's uh yeah i guess so it it very much is like that and it, it's a really funny game because even the god can't do anything to you if you haven't moved your panda yet but as soon as you as soon as you move your panda you're like done for <laughs> <laughs> but like the god and other players are busy trying to chide you into moving your panda for you know short-term mm-hmm. gain so yeah there was yeah i think starcraft even had like literal role-playing maps that was just like you could build units and it was like basically just purely for role playing. Yeah. I mean, the thing I miss the most about like you user maps from Battle.net is literally Battle.net itself. Cause there were so many interesting games that back then that like I could have played. It was a lot more fun than like playing Warcraft three, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I barely played those, like the RTS versions. Yeah. Of like, games. I, I didn't yeah. care for the RTS at all, but like all of these different games and being able to try out new games all the time, like that was the best thing ever. And I, I haven't found anything like old school Battle.net um, I think other than Battle.net all, itself. On, on Battle.net, right, like at least on the old version of it, you didn't have any algorithm trying to take care of whatever game you ended up playing, right? Like it was just... Or, organic yeah. later games that you right. saw in the costume map list, right? Like that's yeah, what that's you saw. Right. There was no if, filter. It yeah, didn't yeah, try exactly. to recommend things to you. And the all of them are really dumb. They were just scripted. Like they only did what the map creators told them to do, you know? Exactly, yeah. exactly. It was just like games by yeah, map name. And I feel like sometimes you could sort them alphabetically. So it was like a war of who could put more exclamation points in their game. Yeah, 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 yeah. on the alphabetized <laughs> list. I think the one thing I miss the most about the community that used to hang out there is that everyone would always try to type in zero for the countdown. Yes, yes. It's <laughs> 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 extremely specific. Yes. Just like when you when everyone's ready, like everyone's like ready up, ready up, ready up, and then it'll like start counting down. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. And then everyone would try to like get zero at the very last moment. It's just this <laughs> I really I really want to. Now I if I can get this first bonus issue off the ground, I really want to make like a StarCraft Warcraft game jam. Let's reinterpret these ideas issue. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. But I have to I be... A... I know that there are, like, mapping communities that do map challenges. Like, they're technically not called game jams, but they are right. essentially game jams, right? Yeah. Um, probably, like, very different spirit than what you're looking for. 
right, but like right. there is definitely like a group of people that would be interested in stuff like that i think yeah i just want want to do a version where not everyone has to go out and buy like starcraft or warcraft you know and you can buy yeah everything. like i like i said earlier dota 2 is free and they do have kind of like a battle net yeah. Uh, custom games thing like Battle.net used to have. So, but that's that's just me speaking stuff into the ether until it becomes real. Everyone, go buy copies of RPG Maker too, so I can make this RPG I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> so, Except if like, you like I, live in Europe or Japan, because I don't think you can do that. Because I'm pretty sure I don't think memory cards are region locked, but I think saves are region locked, unless you've modded your PS2. Which could you could you explain that to me? Is like like the same RPG maker as RPG maker that you find on Windows? Yeah. No. Like... So RPG no? Maker One kind of looks like that, but two and three are both three D. Two is okay. very rudi- two is very rudimentary three D, which is kind of what appeals to me about it. Mm-hmm. And from my little bit of research I've done, it seems like it is the most like fully is far more fully featured than three does. In three is which looks better but wait like, i i thought it was like the same company though right it is the same company i believe it's the same mm-hmm. company okay but but the pc versions that are, like, are the dominant versions are like emulating like the 2d era yeah 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 i actually met somebody five hours six hours ago something like that who's currently making a commercial game in RPG Maker, and I thought that was super awesome. Like, RPG Maker, like, I don't know what it's called, like, 10 or whatever, right? Like, right, yeah, like MVX. Some or... Roman number in the end. Uh, yeah, here's a, here's a secret. Every single platform is viable for making games. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So, it's just... There are a couple of really famous games that have been made in RPG Maker recently, like To the Moon. Oh, yes. Yeah. Or like, if you want to go like famous, famous is like Yume Nikki. Nikai. Nikai. I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm no, I'm realizing that I'm like, it's this is one of those things where, partially because I want to read indie, I like comics. And I want to read indie comics, but partially because mm-hmm. I want to be able to talk to developers in Japan. I've been learning Japanese, so occasionally I'll come across like a Japanese word. There's like. Huh, have I been saying that wrong this whole time? Because now I understand <laughs> pronunciations. Yeah. Was Lisa yeah. made an RPG maker? I think Lisa was made an RPG maker. What's that? I don't think that's Oh, uh, Lisa, I don't know actually. It's got a look of, it's got the look of an RPG maker game. It's got like the kind of like swoosh of like the background. I feel like it might be um game maker. That that could also be true. I knew it was one yeah. of the two. Oh yeah, no, it's RPG Maker VX Ace. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah also, plenty of games are getting made. What are you saying, by the way? Like VX Ace, like what? RPG Maker XP, like what is this? Yeah, like, they. You, so cool. It's software. Look, if you just wanna, if you just wanna sell the same thing you made already, but with some updates, just slap like some sort of addendum on the end, or just revert it back to the original title, like Microsoft does. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, uh, you, RPG M- Maker MV. So what? Fifty-five? If we're doing Roman numbers, what is this? <laughs> so horrible. No, well, this is RPG Maker M, the fifth version, or something. Oh, okay, okay, makes I, sense. Makes actually, a game, sense. an indie apocalypse game like Gay Saga, it was made like RPG Maker ninety-eight or something, like an older version that of RPG so Maker. Cool. I I recently found like this uh, artist. She. Uh, Royo Patan. She does um, typography and uh, poster design and stuff like that. And she sometimes works on a Apple II computer. No, not Apple II. It's like like some old Apple machine with like Mac OS 9 or 8 or something like that. Right. To create uh, art that like, like it has like the whole like aesthetic vibe sort of thing, right? Yeah, but it's like actually like ge- like genuinely made on software from that era. It's really cool just to see like in progress pictures of that. Right. Uh, yeah, like this kind of like in- a cool like inherent limit lim- inherently limiting yourself, so you don't like yeah you don't cheat a little because you can. <laughs> I think it's also like one of the reasons why people like Pico Eight as an yes. engine. It's like you kind of limit yourself, you force yourself like to. 
to work inside of some constraints. Yeah, we, I had a Pico 8 game on here last week or the week before. I'm starting to lose track of which week is week. Which, <laughs> but yeah, I had a Pico game on recently, and like they were playing Pico 8, and I like firing it up and opening up and like cracking into the shell. There's a lot of cool stuff in Pico 8. I didn't realize there was like that, like training yeah, games like and everything. Like, Pico computer. 8's really cool. I really like the part where they're like, you can share images like cartridges. Yeah. And they're mm -hmm. just like games. It's so really cool. cool. Like, uh, it's it's its own ecosystem, essentially, of small games. And like you said, like, sharing a game in a PNG is just insane. Yeah. And it goes to, show, like, how much of a limitation you are working in that your game can be embedded into a fucking image in the end. But, yeah, there's... I had a... Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's so many... But I, I, I think what you said uh, before is important, though. That, like, it doesn't really matter what you're using to make right. stuff. Right, exactly. As long as you make stuff. You technically don't even need anything to make a game. You can just, like, you know, a radio show game, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't require any physical objects. You just need rules. I mean, it requires the radio. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to play, each, people each over issue the radio. tends to have at least one or two tabletop games because nice. those are also games. Yeah, yeah, of course they are. Do you, did you ever have any uh, print and play games? Um, I think there's going to be one in the next issue, I believe. Oh, that's awesome. There might have been a couple that have been technically print and play. I don't remember. Like, mm. you could. There's so many. I just, there's like 110 games at this point. Yeah, I, I imagine it. It must be difficult to remember by now. To, like whether some had print and play element. I believe there is, like, like optional print and play. You know, like oh, you could print and play, or you could use a deck of cards. Have been yeah. In, in like some of the games, have like, I think the fucked up guy <laughs> looking at you had optional print and play, if I'm correct. Or you could use a deck of cards. I don't know. Oh, I see. Or there may be more. That is cool. I, have you guys played any print and play games? Because the only one that I actually like remember playing, uh, this was a while ago, but um, me and my friends wanted to play Catan, and we couldn't play Catan. <laughs> and we found a print and play version of Settlers of Catan. <laughs> as a, like, originally, it came as a promotion with Domino's Plus in 2005 or six or something like that that's and it was in german so it was very weird yeah. but it was basically katan yeah i i watched um a video from uh some producers called shut up and sit down and they made a video on print and play games recently actually several videos i think mm -hmm. uh, and they went over a couple of different really interesting print and play games that I really, really, really want to play, but I still haven't played them. Right. <laughs> you have a print? I've been meaning to go back to that uh, video and like look at the list of games that they reviewed and print them out. Yeah, I have a printer. Um, okay. <laughs> and a lot of the games they reviewed, they reviewed simply because they're uh, single player print and play games so mm -hmm. that you can play them during the, you know, the pandemic and everything. That's so nice. It's like a really not explored or maybe maybe i shouldn't say not explored because i haven't explored it much myself i should explore it as a genre yeah there there are a lot of print and play games out there simply because they're easy to make and they're a really easy way for people who want to make games to try out a game idea and see how well it works mm -hmm. so there's a lot of free ones out there that you can try including uh print and play versions of commercially released games that have like their own printing run that sort of thing yeah and they're all available on the internet. uh board game geek usually yeah 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 i was trying to like what is the name of that website something or other but then yeah board game geek they've been busy modernizing their website and i'd say i'm pretty impressed so far given like just the wealth of things you can do on that website right and it's like I haven't looked at it, but like it is, it was very like '90s forum aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. they're they're finally modernizing it. But 
Yeah, I, I, I think like that's the right thing to do, but I'm kind of sad that it's losing losing that vibe uh, of a 90s forum. Ooh, a BBS board. What is this? Or it's not. It's yeah. Like, oh, I, 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 I kind of do. Yeah, yeah I kind of miss the aesthetic vibe, but I do really enjoy the usability features that they added. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, it's just, it is nice to be able to use a website. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. It's cool if it uses more than like 20% of your screen when you're on an ultra wide monitor or something like that. <laughs> well, your mistake is you know, your ultra wide monitor isn't going sideways. <laughs> you need to have, you need to do like one vertical, one horizontal. Exactly. <laughs> 4K I, averse design. I have considered before, like I should get a horiz I should get a horizontal monitor. But like, what I mean, would like, I, what would wait, I do? Horizontal? You only have vertical ones? No, the other way around. Sorry, I wouldn't want a vertical one. <laughs> so yeah, I, well, only, I, I, have two, I have two vertical monitors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, square, right? Ish, like yeah. a four by three, but uh, vertically, I don't know. That's how I, that's, yes, I like a big cube. <laughs> now the different sizes, so it's awkwardly shaped. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I do have two because I got a new one and I had an old one. I was like, yeah, I'll just put them next to each other so I can look at OBS and Twitch at the same time and not read okay. any of the chats. <laughs> <laughs> I have two of them open and read neither. But make sure nothing's breaking. Make sure all the audio is working. But, 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 um, mm -hmm. we are actually approaching, like, what would be our two-hour mark had we three people? Um, uh -huh. Did anyone else have any last, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Topics, segments, anything you want to say before we go? Not, not plug related. Um, not really, I think so. No, I don't think so, not really. All right, so in that case, do we have any plugs? Yes, shout out to Print and Play Pizza Katana. It's really good, trust me. <laughs> pizza katan <laughs> oh you know what i should say before you have your plugs i should mention that thing the thing i think i forgot to mention is you guys you're both in indie apocalypse you're both contributors yeah. to the issue but i never yes. said what your games were or what issues you were in oh Bryn, your game was magnetizers in issue seven extra drift that is game, correct your game gender dysphoria was in issue 11 the most recent issue yeah, go play it. It's a, it's not a good time, but I think you'll enjoy it. No, I, I don't think art should be a good needs to be a good time to enjoy it. I enjoyed it because I enjoy things sometimes because they're explicitly not good times. Yeah. And I like was, making games that feel bad, so you know. Yeah, and that was like experience. It was like such a relief because like there's there this fear that when I submit something and someone's like, oh, I got a submission right away. I'm like, oh, this person kind of contacted me directly. What if their game is terrible? Um, <laughs> but then like, oh, actually, this game's good. So I'm like, what a relief. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry for putting that amount of anxiety. No, that's like it's a weird. You, I don't want to make, make people feel bad and tell them their games are bad. Well, for what it's worth, I prefer direct communication, so oh, I wouldn't so. be appalled if you told me that. Oh, so do I. I wish people would tell people that their games are bad more often. Or just you like... Don't, you don't want to be around the bush? No, no. Or like, or at least not try to improve things. And mm -hmm. also, game developers, all you game developers this right out there, I'm looking at the camera right now, game developers. <laughs> if someone's, If you're at a convention, if you're somewhere and someone's like, eh, I don't like this game, or... Yeah, you should change this about your game. You can say, I don't care. Or you can say, no, that's fine. You don't have to accept all feedbacks. Sometimes exactly. people just have bad taste. Or sometimes it is just something, I, my diplomatic thing is I've said, eh, it's just not for everybody. And it's liberating. It's a liberating feeling, honestly. Yeah, on that topic, yeah. someone posted a comment on gender dysphoria on my HIO page that just reads in all caps, boring. <laughs> well, I don't think and, they enjoy them. And my response was just, yup, because they're right. Right. <laughs> like, how is this game, like, not boring to me? It's my life. Like, <laughs> of course it's boring. 
and like, which yeah. I thought was really funny. <laughs> right, right. I've listen. I as a lover of like three and a half hour boring Belgian films, I, <laughs> when somebody says something is boring, no, I, it wasn't Belgian, was it? I screwed up the country. I think. Does it matter? <laughs> it kind of matters. I'm talking about Jean Dielman, which I Jean Dielman, Jean Dielman, which I bring up a lot because I think it's. I want to trick people into watching all three and like three and uh, forty five minutes of it, and being like, "There's literally nothing happens in this movie," but you can get invested. But also, sometimes watching bad things is a good time. I think it's amazing though, but I think it's. So there's something I'm thinking about in games. Is there some, are there any games you can think of? And this might be a complicated question for like an immediate answer. A game that does everything it intends to do. Like, like it, if you look at a game, it does, it's not like dated or kind of like sloppy in some ways. Like it, it feels like it's like hits all of its like artistic goals, but you can still look at it and go, you know, this is an extremely unlikable game. I would see why a lot of people would not like this. Uh, art school. Okay. What? Dude, everything about art school is great. I'm no, big... but like, it, it, it answers the question exactly. It's like, I can understand when people look at this game and say that it looks terrible. Because it, it kind of yeah, does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But like, it's... It's intentional badness, right? Like Yeah, no, I like I really appreciate the, the design of art school. It's really good. But it's just like that's like that's exactly what I'm thinking of when you ask that question. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh I get that feeling. Uh, I get the same vibe with art school. There's actually like a game that a few fans of mine made. Uh Tapescape. Uh I'll I'll link it. It's really nice in my opinion. But uh, I can understand why somebody wouldn't like it because, like, it doesn't feel like a game. It feels like you are in a music video for one minute and then it's done. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, What's it called? I linked it in tweet uh, in itch. Uh, itch oh, tweet. tapescape. Tapescape, yeah. It's uh, basically a music video, in my opinion. Like, they don't agree with me that it's a music video, but I think it's a music video. Like, oh, a pure play of music video. Seven. I got seven in notifications. <laughs> Maybe you should log into itch.io more often. I do. Actually, I refresh it constantly. <laughs> Sometimes I get these good follows. I'm like, you're following me, but really, I, w- I wish you would submit games instead of just following me. <laughs> no, no, it's the, it's the wait and the, uh, the waiting approach. It's like follow you see when there's more jams, I guess, or something. Yeah. I don't know. Or, or 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 I feel bad because someone submitted a bunch of games. I'm like, I recognize this name. You were in there, and I know I technically said six months, but I actually mean forever because there's no <laughs> like. I I think I in my mind when I originally wrote like no repeat contributors for six months that there would be something else that existed after six months that would feel less bad. Be like, oh, there's some alternatives instead of like it being a year. And nothing changing functionally, really. But I have to send people emails and say, eh, sorry about that. But, oh, you know, a question I had. This is a question I have that I need to know. Because we were talking, I think, pre show about like, and a little bit during the show about like, you know, Zoom hangouts and like game developer meetups. Because mm-hmm. there was one for like an IGDA chapter or maybe all of the IGDA, and it was like, no students, game professionals only allowed. And I had the import, I had that kind what? of like existential question of like, am I in, am I in, in am I in the, two questions in, or one and a half questions? Am I in the video game industry? Yes. Like, I mean, like if, am I, am I, is, are, are like, you in the green? No. <laughs> <laughs> Very much. Like, yes, oh, then, then you're oh, in the oh, games oh. industry. That's that's what I, I had that serious. <laughs> I, I had a serious question for a second. I was like, wait, am I am I technically in the games industry, or is it like, ostensibly I would say I am. I'm a publisher, and I yeah. Stuff. I mean, <clears throat> a lot of games get released that don't make money. Yeah, and 
it's really hard to say if you're a professional in the games industry or not because you run into like the true Scotsman's fallacy where it's like impossible to define what exactly uh, a true game developer professional like would be. Right. I think, uh, to add a bit to that, I think like the issue is not just what is a true game professional life, but like what is the game industry, right? What do you define as the games industry? Because it's so vague. Yeah. Are, like, Does small... it involve the tabletop industry? How about the print and play people? Yeah. Yeah, it's also just like is somebody like hobby like as a hobby publishing a game on itch and accepting donations as a form of payment the games industry. So it could be like, why not? But yeah. you could also make arguments that it's not right. Like it's so vague. I think yeah. it's a stupid right. question, and I do like the whole. Oh, yeah, I think it's it vague enough that? that like anyone who would want to be considered to be in the games industry could go, but then like. They went out of their way to specifically say no students. Yes, which implies that they have some like stricter criteria for what a games industry professional is. Yeah, I think that so... comes up from like I've heard the, this mentality before of like no students because we don't want them asking for jobs or something or you know that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, then I would just say like just make it a rule that you're anyway. It's right. just. I just think excluding students is a is a bad time. Right. Yes, it helps to further insulate an insular profession. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, mean, I am biased here, being a student, but I I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was a student once, and I would be pissed if I wasn't able to go to a game developer event. Like, I would just go probably like <laughs> right now. Yeah, I would. I would have just went. I would just been like, eh, whatever. Like I make games in my free time. Are you gonna really like not let me in? <laughs> like, yeah. Like... yeah, and you're probably making more interesting games than probably plenty of the developers there. But let's. I could sit around and say like, uh, you know, uh, fucking indie. You know, I'm gonna not be indie games. I'm not gonna <laughs> be a, 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 a the. Uh, a curmudgeon, if you will, a, yes, a curmudgeon, I think is the word. I was on an interview and someone was asking me like, oh, what, what would, for Indie Apocalypse, what kind of game award would you make? I'm like, I, I don't care. I, I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't make any. I would make one award where I give an award to everybody. Who cares? Like, I'm <laughs> so detached. You from... could, you could argue that, uh, congratulations, you're now an Indie Apocalypse is an award. Yes, perhaps. <laughs> it's just it's something I ha I think about occasionally as I've as I have to like rub up against like industry as I get followed by on itch by like PlayStation whatever development specialist or something. I was like, what are you gonna do with Indie Apocalypse? So I can't just port this to PlayStation or maybe just think it's neat, but what do you I don't fit in. I don't get it. But anyway, anyway, I'm just going on at this point, and I could go on forever. <laughs> but this is the part where of the night where I'm like, I'm gonna go get a drink, and then I never come back to the group. So <laughs> and I just kind of like mill about to a different group, not because I have um, am disinterested in talking to you two anymore, but more is like I've run my course for the night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, I, we were at a point where I, we could either go on forever or just stop. And I'm going to say, hey, tell me what your plugs. Bryn, give me some plugs. Oh, uh, I'm making games okay, uh, yeah. on my itch page. Go to my itch page, Bryn minus O. Yeah, Bryn minus O that itch that IO. Perfect. Kind of right. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm making games. Go play them. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, they're good stuff. Thank you. Hey, I make games. I also make music. I'll be releasing a music album next month. Oh, shit. Oh, that's cool. And uh, yeah, you should uh, totally check it out. You can find my games and music at exodrifter.space. And I will definitely be playing some of that music next episode. <laughs> Had I... <laughs> this, the problem of, pl of planning two weeks in advance is sometimes you forget something. <laughs> and, uh, uh -huh. Sometimes I don't you write get... it down. Sometimes you get like 
obsess going through your food bar and go, what is this FM? Fr- I forgot. All, I downloaded all this FM Friday stuff. I'm going to play the Black Knight 2000 theme. And then you get to play <laughs> the music that people sent you. No. Yeah. But I will <laughs> do that next week. So you will if tune by next week and you will be able to hear some of that. That's secret pre-release because in the archives, all the music gets deleted because DMCA, I'm sure. Even though it's technically a podcast, I'm not putting it up on YouTube or anything, but I don't want to deal with DMCA and people. You should use Vimeo, but yeah, we should we should probably you know we should we should stop. Yes. Um, buy Indie Apocalypse. Go to IndiePocalypse.com. Subscribe to this channel so I can get to. I think one of the statuses let me get bits and Amazon free Bezos money, but then the other one runs ads, so I just want the first one without the ads. I want the Bezos bucks tier. So tell people to, to subscribe to this and buy Indie Apocalypse everywhere you can buy it and submit your games. If they're bad, you'll just get an e- one email from me saying you're not in and then you can forget about it because don't let one person decide your entire life of whether things are good or bad. The point of Indie Apocalypse is that you could it's a small micro-opportunities. I'm rambling. Goodbye. I'm going to transition. Everyone say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye.